My name is Kate Pierce, and I'm the publisher at Phoenix Publishing House. I'm delighted to welcome you all to the book launch of Contemporary Child Psychotherapy, Integration and Imagination in Creative Clinical Practice. It's my job tonight to give you the housekeeping and a brief introduction to our evening. First, this event is being recorded. There is a possibility for any participant to be visible. If you do not wish to appear on screen, you may turn off your video, although we would welcome as many of you as possible to remain visible, as even virtually, it's so nice for us to see our audience. Second, the host is muted everyone, and the only way to be unmuted is for the host to invite you to do so. Third, we welcome questions from all of you throughout this evening's event. There are two ways for you to place a question. One, if you want to ask your question in person, please click the raise hand button. This is found in reactions, which is at the bottom of my screen, but may well be at the top or side of yours. Once you've virtually raised your hand, I will invite you to speak at a suitable moment. The host will invite you to unmute and you will need to unmute yourself and then you may ask your question. Once the exchange is complete, the host will remute you. Or two, if you'd rather not ask the question in person, you may write your question in chat and I will place the question on your behalf. I will read out the name of the person who's placed the question. So if you'd rather I do not, please write a non at the start of your question. If you're not sure where chat is, you will find a button called chat in the vicinity of the reactions button. And if you click on it, the chat box opens. You are all also very welcome to simply write comments in the chat to communicate with everyone here. And that's it for housekeeping. Now to tell you what to expect for the next hour. Following me is a brief video from Margot Sunderland, co-founding director of the Institute for Arts in Therapy and Education, director of education and training for the Centre of Child Mental Health and co-director of Trauma Informed Schools UK. After that, we have a few words from Dan Hughes, clinical psychologist, creator of Dyadic Developmental Psychotherapy and president of the Dyadic Developmental Psychotherapy Institute. Following Dan, we have Jane O'Rourke, psychodynamic child, adolescent and family therapist and founder of Mind in Mind. And after that, we have first Ros Reed and then Jean Magania to say a few words about their experiences as editors. Then the floor is open to all of you for your comments and questions. I believe some of our contributors have a few words to say, which I shall also look forward to. The purpose of this evening is twofold. It's to be informative, to give you an insight into the world of integrative child psychotherapy, and it's also a celebration of this incredible and informative book. If you are yet to buy your copy, a link will be placed in the chat to take you direct to our website, where the book is available at a 10% discount. It's also available from all independent bookshops and from wherever you choose to buy your books. As publisher, the celebratory side comes under my remit. Therefore, I would like to start this launch with a toast to editors Ros Reed and Jean Magania and their exceptional contributors to congratulate them on putting together such a readable, innovative and rewarding resource for anyone who works with children and to thank them for entrusting it to Phoenix. To the editors and contributors, thank you. To our speakers here this evening, my thanks to you as well. Here is to an enjoyable hour for us all. Um, now it's time to seg into Margot Sunderland's video. Thank you, everyone. Welcome. So sorry I can't be with you tonight due to a long standing prior commitment. So I'm winging in my huge congratulations to Jean and Roz and all the authors within this incredible book. What a tour de force, a real gap in the market in the field of child psychotherapy. An integrative approach is truly reflected in the wide range of expertise within the author group who have managed to capture so many contemporary issues that face children and their parents today. Together, they provide such a rich breadth and depth within this particular landscape of children in emotional pain and then in the healing of trauma. Jean and Roz are two remarkable women who have formed this close collaboration resulting in this vital resource. They've brought so much to the field through their respective backgrounds and clinical experience. 
on a personal note, so many child counseling and child psychotherapy books, I feel, fail to address what the practitioner actually said. I remember having a conversation about this with Dr. Adar Sachs, who's an adolescent psychoanalyst, psychoanalytic psychotherapist and author. And she said that psychotherapist, psychotherapy books focusing on work with teenagers often don't include what the therapist said because too many therapist authors are embarrassed about how naff some of their interventions sound when written down. In contrast, this, in this book, there is a wealth of verbatim sections of actual sessions. What a relief. The book offers a true integration of different ways of working, bringing together traditional ideas from psychoanalysis with new cutting edge and evidence based interventions. The authors demonstrate how integration serves children and young people far better than sticking rigidly to one approach or methodology. The use of play and arts, of course, are integral to the text demonstrating just how profoundly they provide in-depth and psychologically safe exploration of core pain when everyday words fail to do justice to the child's experience. One of my favorite quotes of all time is by Bessel van der Kolk. How do you get to the place where deeper stuff sits? The arts do just that and this book does just that. Huge congratulations to all the authors and the wonderful editors, uh, Jean and Ros. Goodbye. Right, well, our thanks to Margot. That was absolutely excellent. Um, and now it is time to hand you over to Dan Hughes. As I said before, he's a clinical psychologist and creator of Dyadic Developmental Psychotherapy and president of the Dyadic Developmental Psychotherapy Institute. So Dan, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Kate, for reminding me I should unmute myself if I want to say something and be heard, and I will try to do that. I want you to know I also have it. I will toast this group, too. But since I'm an American and it's two in the afternoon, my toast, Kate, is water rather than what you had. I think you had, which you probably enjoyed more than my water. <clears throat> but I am uh, touched by the book. I was touched by the book in many, many different ways. Why? Because there was many, many chapters, each which had a different author, different therapists, different clients, different ways of being together in the therapy office. And uh, the book represents, uh, integrative is what Marco said, and I think beyond that, it, it, it represents the complexity of our knowledge about human beings, how they, heal, the effects of trauma, how they develop in a relationship. Uh, it, it, it demonstrates it in so many ways that uh, because the, the knowledge we're getting is that the heart of therapy, we sort of had this all along, but we sort of forgot it or don't stress it enough. The heart of therapy is the relationship. Uh, and the gift you're bringing to your client is your person, you, who you are, and your ability to discover who they are and help them to discover who they are. And you do that in a relationship that is intersubjective, which, is, it, which means it's reciprocal. You're having an influence on each other. You're having an impact on each other. And through that, and you're a good person and you're a sensitive and a caring person. And through those experiences, it generates safety, but it also generates an opportunity to explore and discover aspects of self that may never have been brought out well enough. They didn't have the opportunity or they don't have the caring eyes that the therapist now has to do that. The, the lovely bit about our knowledge now, it's coming in so many areas like neurological research and research into relationships, uh, highlighting intersubjectivity from my point of view and attachment uh, from my point of view. Uh, 
And then it's sort of an openness to say, there is not one way. Why would there be? How could there be when there's so many different people, so many different ways to be traumatized by so many different people and so many gifts that each individual has to bring both their person and their skills and their interests. And we all bring that. And if my skill and my interest is really being sensitive to the arts, then I sure can utilize that and bring that and enable the child to utilize what I can utilize and develop a sense of self that is um, uh, facilitated by an awareness of uh, how they fit, how, how their experiences fit into this, this uh, uh, world that we have that is filled with um, things for better or for worse. I seem to have lost my way a bit, sorry here. But uh, having said that, it's not that unusual. Why, why, why would I not lose my way? Because this, again, the book, if I pick this up and go to one chapter, uh, that, that's complete. I don't have to look at the whole book. I could read one chapter and get one sort of uh, moment in time and space between two, three, four individuals, depending on the model of therapy or the, the, the cases that are being presented, that demonstrate how we can have an impact on each other, an impact that... Uh, is healing, transforming, and lasting in the lives of the folks that we work with. So thank you both for, for editing this and contributing to it. And thanks to all the authors who, uh, who agreed and then uh, put their, their mind, their spirit into the book as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dan. That was fantastic. Thank you. And um, thank you for joining us at a, a different time to us. And I hope you enjoyed your water. Um, <laughs> um, right. So now it is time to hand you over to Jane O'Rourke. Um, she is a psychodynamic child, adolescent and family therapist and founder of Mind in Mind. Jane, over to you. Oh, thanks, Kate. And congratulations, Roz and Jean. Uh, I think this is a really fantastic book. Um, I think it's so impressive that somebody like Jean, who has got her core in psychoanalysis, and Roz, who is a brilliant integrative child psychotherapist, have brought together so many people from different uh, parts of child psychotherapy. Because I think it's really important that we're never stuck on an idea of what works. I think what underlies this book is curiosity. And I think we really need to be curious about the children and the families that we work with. I think, you know, I think what drove me to set up Mind in Mind was to share the ideas of people like Jean, she's a legacy interviewee, um, and Gray Music, I think he might be joining us at some point today, and Dillis Dawes and, um, and Dan Hughes, because, the thinking helps, helps us hold this work. And, you know, for example, I saw a child today uh, and the parent, and there was so much confusion, there was so much worry. And what really helped me to hold it was the thinking. And this thinking in, in this book, I think really, um, as Margot said, you know, I think hearing from the therapists about, their input in the session helps us deepen our work, helps us to be able to be, um, to really think about how we're interacting with the children and families we're working with. And I think, you know, I think the work is getting more difficult as well. You know, I think the pandemic has just made a very difficult situation an awful lot more difficult. So we need the wisest minds to help to guide us. And, and what I was going to say as well was, you know, I think I, mean, I, I interviewed um, Alicia Lieberman last week, who said that we should all be social warriors. <laughs> and, you know, once we've got the thinking like this, you know, I think this thinking to help us hold the work, I think we should also be, all of us should be really, really open about what the difficulties are that we're seeing. And that we're sort of trying to pick up an awful lot of mess as well that we see. Um, as a result of social policies and poverty, um, which is growing and it's going to get worse this winter when the winter bills come in. 
But for the meantime, I think it's such a comfort, as Dan said, to be able to open a chapter and something feels very complete. It's been really beautifully edited, really, really thought through, and is really rooted in wisdom. So thank you both very much and to all the contributors in it. That's lovely. Thank you so much, Jane. Um, gave us lots to think about there. Um, and now I'd like to hand you over to Ros Reed, uh, one of our editors. Over to you, Ros. Excuse me, Kate. Only a hundred people are being allowed in. Is there some way of changing that before Ros speaks? Um, I'm, I have sent messages. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll deal with that um, separately behind the scenes, Jean. Thank you. But I suspect not from what Ros is saying. Um, yes, I'm, I'm really sorry about that. We did expand the license to 500, so I don't quite know what's happened. So we should have been able to let everyone in. So, But we are recording it. And so anyone who's missing it tonight will be able to see it on YouTube. So I'm so sorry. A bit, little bit worried that we're missing some authors here tonight, which would be such a shame. Uh, but I will be mentioning all of them anyway. Um, but I just want to say I'm delighted to celebrate the publishing of this book. Uh, with everyone here tonight. I'm sorry that we've got some people missing. Um, it's been four years, four long years since Jean said to me, Roz, let's write a book together. <laughs> with the pandemic and all sorts of hurdles in the way, we've done it, Jean, we've done it. And here we are. Um, I feel this is a magnificent achievement of which I'm very, very proud. So when thinking about integration, I want to really underline how special it is to have a psychoanalytic child psychotherapist like Jean and an integrative child psychotherapist and me working together on a book like this, as James said, it immediately says in quite concrete form, something about bringing together the very best of therapeutic approaches in a collaborative, thoughtful way. We live in such frightened, polarized times, don't we? But when we share and work together with our differences, we can be so much more creative, bringing together psychoanalytic and integrative child psychotherapy we have potential for playfulness, fun, the arts, neuroscience, child development research, alongside the rich, well-seasoned heritage of psychoanalytic thinking. I guess I'm greedy. Why have one approach when you can have of working when you might have lots and have everything? I was thinking about the inspiration behind writing a book like this. I chose to do my training at the Institute because of its creativity and arts-based way of working with children. And that still draws people today. During my foundation year, I found incredible healing myself and in integrating the arts with therapy. I can still remember standing up 20 years ago to read my poem to a sympathetic audience of fellow students who clapped and cheered. It was life-changing. I was also in my own psychoanalytic psychotherapy where I could process and make sense um, such these rich creative experiences. I took a break from the training and returned to my work as a youth worker in Tower Hamlets introducing puppets and sand playing creative wide games and began to see how effective it was in the community in which I was serving. A year later, I was back and doing the MA. When five years later, Margot asked me to return and run the training, I had discovered lots in the field that was important that I could bring to students. Always interested in psychoanalysis, I did the infant observation at the Tavistock and made new contacts and friends there, um, including Graham Music. This was a seminal moment for my own thinking, and I wanted to see how I could deepen students' learning in all these areas together. The book is structured so that it represents all the aspects of the coursework that trainees do on the training. It shows the complexity of the training, how students need to think from the very beginning, how they're going to integrate theorists such as a diverse as Stephen Porges and child psychoanalysts like Whit Winnicott, spread apart by decades, as well as by skill set, research and clinical experience. The book begins with Graham Music's chapter, which immediately introduces us to integration when it's considered by a seasoned therapist like Graham. His own rich work with children that integrates a wide range of theories is familiar to many of us, and I guess we can't get enough of it. It is Graham who brings up the idea of how tribalism and psychotherapy can miss opportunities to learn from others about different therapy traditions that might work more successfully than the one we already know. The training at the Institute begins with a two-year infant observation in the traditional Esther Bick style, and so we include a paper by Neela Basu. Here students learn not only how to look and understand what they're seeing, 
but also what they bring to the field by merely being in it. They learn in the words of the late Anne Seats, who was one of our long standing seminar leaders, to be a benign armchair in the corner of the room, comfortable, familiar, and set thing even. The book also includes a first year chapter on attachment and trauma. And then from the second year, we move to help think, think with students about child psychiatry and mental health to help them equip for the working life of a child psychotherapist and mix with other professionals. They undertake their own mental health project there. We also have case presentations. And then the final year includes their qualifying clinical papers. And unusual for our training, students record their therapeutic work with children so that they can excerpt supervisors and reflect upon. This helps them think about what they why they said that did this sad did they meet the core feeling then and help the child move through? Was their idea to use a sand tray then a good idea or was it a deflection? Did it help or become it includes a number of written accounts that is unedited. Um, unusual, as Margot had said, this gives the reader a fascinating insight into the usual private process of a child psychotherapist. The book finishes with chapters from graduates and staff on working in schools and a chapter on technique, working with defences, my own with an adopted adolescent, and Jean's one on training supervision, which is a vital element to the training. I think any psychotherapist will tell you that we never finish learning, growing and developing. Being integrative means keeping an eye on the horizon as to what is emerging. It's not about being eclectic, but about staying on the edge of new discoveries, being flexible enough to include new ideas. So while we hold on to the idea, old ideas of attachment theory, which is still growing and new research is coming about that, that all the time, and, but, and also the transference say, we're also interested in new ideas regarding regulation of the body, how that works with the arts, ideas about dissociation, social injustice and gender. I see this book as being part of a growing body of work, showing the work of an integrated child psychotherapist, and I hope many more will follow. Finally, um, I would, Jean and I would like to thank all the authors for their terrific contributions. Graham Music, I'm gonna say them all by name. Graham Music, Neela Basu, Irene Elberioni, Jessica Olive, Selina Alder, Adina Belloli, Sarah Marks, Megan Holland, Maria Furlong, Kate Clark, Liz Murray Bly, Jane Brinson, Claire Lewoski, and of course, Dan Hughes, our long-term friend at the Institute, for his forward. And I'd personally like to thank Jean, my co-editor, who was my supervisor and is now my mentor, my colleague, and my friend. I'm so proud of what we've done together. <laughs> oh, that was lovely. Thank you so much, Roz. Um, right, so now it's the last of our scheduled speakers. Um, it's time to hand you over to Jean Magania. Over to you, Jean. Thank you, Roz. It has been such a pleasure doing this project together through thick and through thin. And I want to greet all of you who, I guess there should be another 140 of you, but I don't know what's happened but you were to be from England, Ireland, Italy, France, Mexico, USA, South America, Russia, Turkey, and places unknown to celebrate this work that's been done primarily by participants in the I-8 psychotherapy training in London. And I want to congratulate all of you I-8 psychotherapists, chapter authors. Many of you were in the seminar with Roz and I when we were having a dialogue about how to publish your work. And at that moment, I realized it took me a long time to have the courage to submit my writing for publication. And I faced really numerous rejections. It was only when I succeeded in getting my paper on infant observation with Mrs. Bick published in the Journal of Child Psychotherapy that I had the courage to keep on writing. And so when I realized this, I said to you, Roz, let's publish a book. And Roz and I invited the psychotherapy trainees in that room to submit their best papers from their eight, psychother eight psychotherapy training. And we said, we'll show the world the extent of I-8 students' step-by-step -step development of child psychotherapy. So to all of you, the contributors, I hope that this publication of your excellent work will encourage each of you to keep on writing and keep on sharing your psychotherapeutic ideas 
through talks and publications. And I really wish that, that the chapters in the book will also inspire those of you in the audience to discover the courage to write for talks and publications. You know, at, at I8, you not only learn to work therapeutically with children and teachers and parents, you also had a lot of practice writing, researching, and talking and giving talks in groups. On another note, I want to just talk about time and again, parents and teachers become extremely anxious about children who are not learning and they put more and more pressure on the children to learn. And I know from years of my teaching in schools and working as a psychotherapist, it's not the way to move forward. We all know we need to spend more time with the children to have joyous experiences, more time with the child, as Dan said, to help the child develop the sense of self and to look at the worries and feelings which interfere with developing intellectually and forming intimate relationships. We also know that many school children are not going to be disturbed enough to be referred to child and adolescent mental health clinics, or their parents are never going to go to a clinic, never be able to take off work to bring them to the clinic. But primary school children are brought to school by their parents every day. And, and Margot, you know, your idea of putting our eight trainee psychotherapists in primary schools to work free of charge with teachers, parents, and children, I think is a marvelous cost-effective method for reaching children with difficulties. And it's a secure method for supporting their parents as soon as the difficulties are noticed in the primary school. So we all know that if children's emotional and physical needs are met, they'll be able to work through the impediments to learning and forming good relationships. So my message is, the secret is not simply more academic tutoring, but more emotional nurturance and understanding of the emotionally disturbed child's desperate flag of silence, temper tantrums, so-called laziness of their inattentiveness and boredom masking depression. So every psychotherapist contributing to this book has been working in schools and some of the chapters discuss forming a team around the child. And I want to just describe two. The team consists of a psychotherapist, a teacher and a parent who begin working together to try to provide emotional space and time for the child to be more deeply understood both in school and in the child's family. And, and one of the chapters is Sarah Marks, and she describes how the therapist's work strengthened the attachment between parents and child, and thus removes obstacles which make it difficult for the child to talk openly with parents about their feelings, worries, and concerns. And then there's another chapter, I can only mention these two chapters, I'm afraid, but there's another chapter, Jane Brinson, who describes how by providing this cost-effective psychotherapy in schools through trainees, it becomes finally appreciated by the head and the school staff. And Jane showed how it was possible to set up a psychotherapy service in which the school pays the psychotherapist to work in this London school. And I think Jane and others highlight the importance of empathizing with the school staff and helping them feel seen and heard and understood so that they can create a trusting collaborative way of working together to understand the child and their parents. And those of you from abroad, I hope other countries might be inspired by this book to follow Margot Sunderland's idea of providing cost-effective psychotherapy in primary schools so the heads of schools will eventually incorporate paid psychotherapy for the children's emotional development in schools. Psychotherapy, not just tutoring. 
I'm not going to mention all the chapters individually, but each empathize, emphasize empathic attunement with the child, the parents, and the teachers. I'm sorry I can't mention all those chapters, but I want to just talk about infant observation because infant observation is a very important part of training for psychotherapists and for all these authors. And you see in the book drawings, thank you, Kate, you've been amazing publishing all these drawings and dialogue and Santre pictures. And all the authors show their awareness that a child's picture is worth a thousand words. So through applying their understanding of infants to their clinical work, the authors carefully note how the child's hands speak the inner world of the unconscious before adequate symbols for words are formed, like Margot's quote by Van der Kolk. The therapist observe and think about how the hands lovingly hold a teddy, punch the paper with dots in an angry way, or remain in, in clenched fist in a terrified way when they first get to know the therapist. As well as the therapist begin to note if the eyes look directly at the therapist with enthusiasm, love and pleasure, or turn away from the therapist as a frightening figure. The other thing about I8 is that they're really trying to understand the body using neuroscience, somatic knowledge, infant observation, and their counter-transference experiences. And with these, they notice the child's whole body movement, including the child's breathing. And also what we need to learn, all of us as psychotherapists and teachers, they assist the traumatized children to regulate their emotions through different tones of voice, volumes, rhythms, and pitches, reflecting their containment in their emotionally attuned speaking to respond to the highly aroused bodily and emotional states. So I think psychotherapists of all different orientations and teachers and nurses and doctors and parents can learn so much from these therapeutic journeys, which incorporate the use of clay, drawing, puppets, drama, music, storytelling, awareness of bodily states, as I said, and the use of metaphors to create a deep empathic communion with the child at that present moment in psychotherapy. And the therapist in their pre clinical training need to do these things themselves and know what it means to express things through the arts. Well, I feel certain that each reader will be inspired to work more creatively with awareness of the child's need for both pleasurable and also emotionally serious therapeutic encounters with their, person, their, their, their personal truths. The only thing is, I wish this contemporary child psychotherapy book showing how children can develop an internal psychic home for their feelings had existed before we worked with the very ill, not speaking, not eating, not walking children at Great Ormond Street Hospital. It would have been extremely helpful with those children. So thank you, Roz, for allowing me to join you in this collaborative project, which I hope will inspire psychoanalytic psychotherapists as well as integrative psychotherapists. That was brilliant. Thank you so much, Jean. Um, so the um, floor is now open. Does anyone wish to raise their hand to, and ask a question or make a comment? Um, please go ahead. Or do any of our speakers have anything they'd like to add now they've heard um, everyone, everyone's um, else's talks? I was wondering, Roz and Jean, what, what do you hope to be the, the best legacy from the book? What do you hope to that the legacy of the book would be? That, what will people draw from it, do you, do you hope? Um, 
Raj, your turn. Yeah, I, that's a good question. I think the legacy would be, um, would be actually encouraging more child psychotherapists to write about the work that they do. Um, and I, mean, when I think about my chapter, I don't think I've really intended to, to, to write really. It's really sort of genes, um, I, you know, gene pushing me to write. Gene will know how painful I find it to write. Um, and it was a struggle, but actually, um, I think it's really important to write about our work. I think it's important to sort of put down what we do um, so we can think about the next generation of um, therapists being trained. Um, and um, I think that's maybe that's the legacy. It is sort of thinking about it being part of a collection of other papers and books that people will write. We should be writing about our work more. I think often as a therapist, we're very practical people. We get on with the job, but actually standing back and being able to write about it is important. Um, and I think um, if we can find um, clients who are willing to let us do that, and I was very fortunate with mine, if I was able to do that and others in the book, of course, have done that, then I think that's very valuable that we're able to, to share in that way. And I think, that when I read these chapters, when they were submitted for the book, I thought we have a lot to learn in the psychoanalytic world about getting more in touch with the bodily states of the children and becoming much more aware of emotional regulation, partly comes through receiving feelings of the children through reverie and containing them within ourselves and understanding our countertransference. But I think the part that we maybe haven't thought about sufficiently is how we, and Dr. Meltzer talks about this, a, a well-known British psychoanalyst, how we use our own body to influence how the child can regulate their bodily states. So I think that there's much more discussion about, as Dan said, about using and thinking about how we affect the child. That's a really important aspect that we haven't thought, how our body affects a child. And the other thing which I, the two other things are, I think what I'm aware of through the I-8 training is that there also is an emphasis about what Ann Alvarez talked about, which is psychotherapy also needs to repair experiences that the child hasn't had. I mean, to create experiences that the child hasn't had by providing joyful, pleasurable understanding that psychotherapy is not only about facing painful truths, it's about repair, repairing the de deprivation in many children who have, say, children of immigrant parents who've had trauma, who haven't had the joyful experience that people who've had the privilege not to be with so much trauma have had in their growing up. So bringing joy as well as understanding is a very important I eight contribution. And thirdly, it's what Margot's done. And I hope I just see there are people from Iran here and I forgot to mention you, Iran, you know, that, that you think about how you can get psychotherapy in the schools and help support the teachers and the parents. Much more could be done to support the parents and the teachers working collaboratively. So that's been my mission in working with I eight students is to say, let's create the team around the child as mentioned in the chapters. That's great, thank you, Jean um, and Roz and, and Jane for, for um, giving a question. Um, did any of the contributors who are here tonight want to add anything? I'm guessing no. Um, <laughs> Oh, yes. well, uh, Tamsin um, Cotis, would you like to unmute yourself and ask your question? I'm not a contributor. I just jumped in. I hope that's okay. <laughs> but I'm absolutely fine. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say um, how 
fantastic it is to see this book. And I was just wanting to say how, for me, its form really reflects its function in that it has like a developmental approach. It's looking at the way that the actual training helps us develop as therapists. And it, um, and that's what we're doing when we're looking at how children develop and what we all bring, whatever our persuasion is an understanding of children as developing human beings on a, on a way to becoming their fullest selves as well as being who they are in the moment, which is what makes the work so magical and beautiful. And then I just thought to have this collection of writing just so... Can you hear me? Is that all right? I've got something on to you. Yeah. Um, it's so fantastic because that's there's such a diversity of voice in the book approach, but not just approach, not just theoretical background, which I think everybody's covered so many fantastic bases that work so well together. And we all have our own sort of particular things we love as therapists more than others, but they're all in here. But it's the children we're working with are so diverse. So there's never going to be one book or one voice or one person that helps us with that. So it's just such a thrill to have all these voices. And the idea that Roz, to hear you say, you know, we need to get the work that goes on from I therapists out there. We really, really do, because it, it isn't, it, it's not known about enough. It's both incredibly complicated and also beautifully straightforward. And, um, you know, shout it from the rooftops. And I love the idea of us as social warriors. You know, I have my I have my therapeutic weapons at the ready all the time. So I just want to say I'm really happy to be here. I'm really looking forward to reading the book properly. And um, yeah, thanks to everybody. There's so much in there. That's brilliant. Thank you so much, Tamsin. Um, and it uh, looks like Neela, who is one of our contributors, would like to say something. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. So just uh, to shortly just say, I'm really proud to be a part of this book. Um, I was proud to be asked and proud for my chapter to sit alongside um, the other contributors to know actually how important infant observation really has been um, in contributing how I think about, how I write about the child and the developing kind of relational communication those interactions um, and how I used to bring them to life in team meetings, like really remembering the child and the relationship. Um, and yeah, just thank you so much to Roz and Jean and um, Phoenix Books for all of the support in creating this wonderful book. Thank you. Thank you, Neela. That's that's so great. I'm glad. I hope you enjoyed the experience. Brilliant. Um, so any other questions from anyone? I mean, about something that you've heard already or, or questions about, in you know, about the integrative child th psychotherapy in general? Um, perhaps you've never practiced in that way yourself and you'd like to get a little bit more insight into what it what it means. Okay, well, in that case, um, oh, yep, yeah, we do, lovely. Okay, uh, Misha Resnick, over to you, thank you. Hi, yeah, my question is is just about, uh, well, first of all, I've got the book and I'm looking forward to reading it. And um, maybe some of the answers are in there that I'm yet to come across, but um, I wonder what some of the challenges are of bringing together different ideas and working with um, these young children that you've been working with. Shall I answer that, shall I have a attempt at that answer? Jean's nodding. Yeah, good, really good question, Misha. I, I, I mean, I think one of the biggest challenges is probably that it's not a mess. So even though it's integrative, it's brought thing ideas are brought together thoughtfully. So it's not just a question of um, right, so we're jettisoning that or we're just we're going to take that bit of theory and that bit of theory, and then that's going to be my model. Sometimes I think, particularly when you work with a sort of clinical group with a particular say for instance I work in adoption then I probably have been quite careful about what I integrate I know for instance that dialect development and psychotherapy is very good I know that EMDR is very good but I know that working with the arts is working with parents and the family together is important as well so but other therapists other integration therapists might have a slightly different way of working 
Um, and I can see Claire's hand is up there as well. So I think that'd be great to hear from you as well, Claire, what you think. But I think the biggest challenge is that it's not a mess, that things are thoughtfully brought together and that you really understand what you're integrating. It's hard work wrestling with the ideas, bringing them together. It's not about a sort of cherry picking um, box of chocolates. It's much more, much more robust than that. Claire, maybe I don't know if you can add something to that. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, I teach the integrative module on the I8 training and, and it's one of the things that we do grapple with, like what, what Ros was just saying, is um, what exactly does it mean to be integrative? Um, when we look at different ideas around that, and certainly we're, we're not looking at doing a kind of pick and mix sweet bag, a kind of eclectic, it's not something eclectic. And I think more and more it's more moving towards an, an idea of pluralism. So meaning one of the things I think about with the students is that not everything has to marry up neatly. It's not about forming a kind of um, a jigsaw where all the edges are going to be very neatly fitted together. That some theories actually, you know, may even contradict each other at points. But I think we get drawn to the theories that we need to understand the children that we're working with. So I, I think particularly, this is one of the things I say to the students when they're training, is that when they're writing their, you know, the big piece of work, their dissertation or preparing for their final viva, um, that they may be drawing on bits of theory or bits of technique that their peers may not be. Because they're trying to find what, I think this is one of the beauties really of being integrative, is that we are able and being pluralistic is that we're able to think about starting with the child. So rather than I have a model and you as the child need to fit to it, it's let me see what you need. Let me try and assess that really carefully and thoroughly and let's try and co-create something together that's going to feel um, that it reaches you. I mean, that, that to me feels the, the main thing that we're trying to do through IE is how do we reach the child through the particular ways of thinking about them um, and certainly through the technique. I think probably technique is where we get most um, of a kind of um, coming together of, of students using very similar um, techniques. So Roz has mentioned, and I wasn't here earlier on, um, unfortunately, to hear what other people have said, but just in terms of the use of the arts and, and what, what Jean was saying um, in terms of pleasure and joy states, um, but also in the chapter I was writing in the book on defences, what I was really trying to show is how the, the arts in particular can be very useful. Um, they, can, they can be useful in terms of maybe making an interpretation much more palatable or tiptoeing up to something that may have been very difficult to say directly. Um, but they also act as a container and a transitional object for children too. So I think the focus on the arts, and that's not to say that all children will make um, enormous use of the arts, but I think the fact that we have that as well as a technique that's very informed by attachment theory and neurobiology alongside very broad um, approach to kind of psychoanalytic theory, both Kleinian and independent and, and beyond. Um, so I think those are some of the kind of key elements that when you meet somebody integrative from the Institute, all their models will be very particular to them, but also particular to the children that they're working with at that time, like Ros was saying about working with adopted children and how she adapts her, her technique. And also like all clinicians, I think, we, we go looking for the theory to help us to understand our clients. So I, I, hope, um, I hope that kind of answers a little bit what you were asking, Nisha. Yes, it does, thank you. That was brilliant. Thank you, Claire and Roz. Um, and we have a, a question in the chat um, from Anna Beckett to ask that I'm finding in schools there's a growing demand for group work um, as issues are affecting so many people, pupils in general. Um, are there any examples of small group work in the book? Um, the one-to-one -one work is vital, but employers also seem to desire skills for groups. And I'm wondering if this is something that will be focused on in future to meet demand. Um, who'd like to take that question? 
Ross, Jane? Is, is Jane Brinson here? I don't know if she's here, but if you she look is. at the, the chapter- Jane is here, actually. Oh, let's let Jane speak, if you don't mind, Jane, because she talks about doing some groups in schools. And would you feel like speaking, Jane? Yeah, sure. Um, so I, um, and I refer to the fact that uh, at the time of the placement, I was, I was um, uh, writing about um, at that stage of my training, I started doing some groups, which at the time were coming from the demand from the school. Um, and so at that stage, it was, um, I think where the group that, that I referred to was looking around some kind of group friendship groups um, with a group of girls who were in the school. And that's actually something that I've really developed um, in my career, the path that I've chosen to take. One of the roles that I'm now doing um, and, and my training I really equipped me to do is I now run a multi-family group in a primary school um, in, in London. Um, and that's um, really, you know, using so much of the kind of integrated framework that we've been talking about today. In that particular model, I work with a group of um, six families at a time. Um, and so that's, um, a, a child who is not getting the best out of school is that example um, is it, the kind of group that the client group that we're working with there and they work with the parent in the room with them six families at a time and so we're doing lots of work with with the arts with relational play uh, and bringing the reflection and, and thinking about how the parent can be supporting the child with the children in the room. And then we meet with the parents afterwards and we're kind of supporting parents to think deeply about their children, how they experience them in the group. So all of the kind of different threads around observa observation, around uh, using play, using the arts, are really kind of, I have found them to be able to really make use of them in exactly as the question was asking around how to, to, to work with groups. And in this particular school setting, this has been a really, really helpful and a model that's been really well used that the organization has been running for kind of 10 years now we're working in schools across London so I really felt like the training and, and all the kind of aspects that are mentioned in the book and those initial groups that I started running um, as part of my training have really led me to be able to kind of grow and develop as a therapist and, and offer a different way of working I still do the individual work with with children and, and, with, and with families but but I find this a really enriching and, and impactful way of working that's fantastic. Wonderful news. <laughs> Thank you, Jane. And we've got time for one last question. So if anybody wants to um, come in and ask that one last question, you are very welcome. Um, speak now or forever hold your peace. Um, Ros? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I just wanted to add that I completely forgot to mention Carleen Classen. So I'm so sorry I missed you. Um, from the for her brilliant chapter in the book as well and I don't know if Carleen's here actually would she like to say something since we missed her I noticed that Graham Music's arrived as well which is really great I think it was Carleen here still Carleen is here she's, just um, she's here I am here I am here thanks Ross yeah no thank you <laughs> I um I did contribute and it was a, a real pleasure to be able to I guess um right theoretically but having more and more client experience with the client experience in mind and i think as practitioners it's always so important to kind of keep checking in with how your work reaches the many children and young people that we work with and uh, like you and i work in adoption um and the same goes for parents uh and actually how to rem how to continue to be open um, to be a professional, but also work alongside the parents, which I think is incredibly important. Um, and to help them help them understand what it is that the child needs. And I guess to figure out what makes the child or the young person, the person that they are and how we can help support them in helping them to thrive. Good. Thank you. That was wonderful. Um, did did Graham want to say a few words? Yes. Graham, did you? You don't have to. Hello there. Sorry, I've just come back from um, giving opening a, a centre for child for childhood studies. So I think it's quite relevant. And what I was struck by was the kind of integrative nature of. Um, 
of the way that those courses are organized. And I, I just wanted to say really how everybody should be really proud of this book and proud of the contributions and how the integrative world, and I know it from having trained integratively initially before I did my psychology training, there can be a sense that it's less intellectually rigorous and there's all kinds of ridiculous status things that go on in the world of therapy. And really, we need to stand up and shout and talk about what extraordinary work is being done because it, it's fantastic that it's done in the consulting rooms. It's fantastic that people be trained to do it. But actually, we, could, we, we should be able to make more of a noise publicly because, and this, I think, is a really fantastic move in that direction. So I suppose what I want to say really is be proud of your training, what you've learned, what you can do, trust yourselves, and that's how we really need this work. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Graham. I'm so pleased you could join us at the end there. Um, so we're just left with a few minutes. So I'd like to hand back over to Ros, um, just so that she can say a few final words. Um, before I do, I'd just like to say thank you to everyone who was able to join us. I'm terribly sorry about the 100 limit. Um, that was a technical issue beyond our control, um, which we thought well, anyway, I apologize. And I hope those of you that weren't able to make it do get to watch this video and find it very informative. And thank you everyone who did manage to get here. And thank you to all the speakers and everyone who asked questions. And now over to you, Roz. Thank you so much, Kate. And thank you for everyone who's been here, who's here tonight. I'm so disappointed that there were a, a number, really a lot more, you know, over we were left waiting to so sorry about that, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to see it on YouTube as well. But thank you for everyone who's, who's come tonight, and um, for all the co contributors as well, for their chapters, um, for Kate and Georgie for organising this. And I really like what Graham said there, and I kind of want to finish with that, that we should shout from the rooftops about the work that we're doing. Um, we work hard, and I think we should be proud of the training that we, that we have. So thank you so much, everybody. Okay, well, I think that's it, everyone, unless any of the speakers have any final words. Jean, did you want to say anything? Yeah. <laughs> I, um, well, I think as an outsider to I8, I think I need to emphasize what Graham said, that the training has developed immensely. And it, I think it has a most sophisticated way of helping the people learn about everything, including psychoanalytic thinking about following the child's unconscious. And I really encourage people to follow what the child's unconscious is trying to say. So that's beautiful. Thanks so much, Jean. Thank you, Roz. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Dan. Thanks everyone who was a part of this. And um, I hope you all enjoy the book. Have a good evening. Enjoy the rest of your evening, everyone.